Sure. Good morning, Chairman Corona and committee members. My name is Ann Bedour, and I work for Texas Appleseed. But I'm here today speaking on behalf of the Texas Fair Lending Alliance. We're an organization, an alliance of 60 plus nonprofits and statewide groups across Texas, community based organizations that are really concerned about what's happening in the payday and car title lending market today. We came to you last session with a lot of personal stories and local survey data indicating a pattern that that there were a lot of high charges for payday and auto title loans, and that in combination with the ongoing cycle of debt was in too many instances pulling families deeper into financial crisis instead of helping them weather a short-term financial shortfall. And what we found among our membership is that these patterns continue and that these kinds of loans are continuing to drain charitable dollars from a lot of the nonprofits in our communities. I want to thank you for your efforts last session. As a result of the laws that passed, I think we now have the tools including the statewide data collection to find the right balance between resolving some of the market problems and ensuring that our Texan, Texas families have access to credit. The first two data, quarters of data not only confirm the message that we brought to you last session, but I think they point to areas where we found results that were worse than what we thought. I have three key findings that I'd like to share with you, and the first is that Texans are paying more for these products than borrowers in other states. Our fees are among the highest, if not the highest, in the country. And just to put it into, into some dollars and cents, based on the reporting for, for single payment payday loans, a $500 two-week payday loan would cost a Texas borrower on average $110 in fees. The same loan in Oklahoma, $65. The same loan in Florida, $55. And those are all markets where payday lenders are operating successfully. And so these examples show not only the disproportionate burden on Texans as compared to other states, but also how the industry can succeed without placing such a high fee burden on our communities. The second point I wanted to make is, is looking at the refinance data. And what we're finding is that refinancing is more the norm than the ex exception. And we found, especially in the single payment products, nearly three out of four borrowers were having to refinance their loans at least once and a significant number multiple times within a, a, a quarter. And so if you think about it, if 70 to 75 percent of the borrowers are, are having to refinance, it means they're not able to successfully repay the loan as it stands. It's a two-week to 30-day loan. And when so many borrowers are failing, you have to ask your, yourself the question, is this a failed product? And I believe it is. And it's just not working as it stands. The, the last point that I want to make, and, and one that really struck out to us, is, is that over 70,000 vehicles in the last six months have been repossessed by auto title lenders. That's impacting one in 10 borrowers of auto title loan products. In some of the installment products, it's even a higher number. And so I think that's just another sign that these loans are failing. And if I could have just a few more minutes, I think that we do need, okay. One. One, one more minute. I, I just wanted to take, you know, to move from problems to solutions, and I believe we do need enforceable standards in the marketplace, and we have the data, we have the information and the tools to move that ahead. And there are three things that I think have to happen if we want to see the Texas market in line with other markets across the country. And one is limit the fees so that Texans aren't stuck with the highest fees in the country. Number two, limit the number of times the fees can be paid on a loan so that after someone's paid $2,000 on a $500 loan, is that loan paid off? We have to have a standard. Of course, I think it should be much lower than that, but as the market stands, there's no standard. And the third point is that there has to be an affordability requirement that takes into consideration the borrower's ability to successfully repay the loan within the original loan term so that we have a successful market that works both for the borrowers and for the lenders. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. And thank you very much. Members, uh, Senator Van Vu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One quick question, Mr. Dork. In your testimony, you cited that uh, our uh, customers here, our users of this product, are paying a higher fee. In those states where there are lower fees, are they regulated by state law? Is it local law, or is it just the market itself working to Or Can you answer it's, that? Sure. It's regulated by state law. And in the vast majority of states, there are state laws that regulate the fees on these businesses. Thank you very much.